I want to thank Brother Tillis, the one tremendous man who came on board at the beginning, at the very beginning. Let me let me say something really, really quickly about, about where we are. Um, Save Our Sons was birthed out of a conversation I had with a friend of mine, Arthur Jackson, in Miami. And as was stated, you know, Miami and Jacksonville are, are leaving our state in certain areas that we shouldn't be proud of. I think the frustration for me as a pastor is by the time most of these young men get to me, they're in casting. Um, I've done the funerals in this community, probably more so than any pastor. Um, that's not anything I'm proud of. I promise you, I'm not proud of that. That's not a badge of honor. Um, pastor Morgan is here. He understands getting up on a Saturday morning, putting on a suit, driving to your church and trying to figure out what you're going to say to a mother who's burying a 16-year-old. I can't stand there and say, this is the will of God. I don't believe that. I believe God has control of all things. But theologically, I'm in an awkward place. So, you know, I, you know, for lack of a better word, I, I felt compelled. I had a conversation with Miss, Miss, Miss Duncan from Community Connections. Just wave your hand. And put your hands together for Ms. Duncan. She's really proud of me, enormously inconspicuous and all of that kind of good stuff. But this really got jump started because that woman there bought in in a five minute conversation. In a five minute conversation. I didn't sell her on Save Our Sons, I just shared my heart. And she bought in. And that's how we're here. And so many organizations started to come on board. 100 black men, fraternities, almost every uh, African-American fraternity jumped on board. Um, Edwards College, you know, all these groups started to come together. And last night I found myself sitting on my deck by myself. Um, um, I, 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 am, I am the father of three beautiful girls and, husband of an amazing wife, and they had all left me uh, to go eat crabs. <laughs> you know, I, I, mean, I didn't matter last night. <laughs> and I'm sitting on my deck by myself, literally in tears, because when you live your life for people that you don't know, sometimes people don't understand what your life means. And sometimes you don't understand your life. I thought about this. Nervous. I didn't know if anybody was coming. You know, I didn't know if anybody was coming. Y'all get it? And that's a good thing. We have got to change the culture of this community. We can stand up and we can give our political speeches. We can, we can lay out our agendas. But you want to know the real change that's going to happen? <laughs> Schools can't fix kids that keep getting broke at home. Oh. And policemen are not designed to follow our kids. By the time they get to you, you ain't following them. You're arresting them. You're putting them behind bars. And that culture is not designed to save our children. So save our sons and to save our daughters is about saving our babies. The Lord is getting the handcuffs. Academic success is tied to parents as much as it's tied to teachers. So when you have parents that care, they will fight for their children. They will fight with their children. And they will win. And that's why we're here. That's what this is about. So now it's easy.
easier to teach a child when the parent is a partner. Because now that parent doesn't have to fight the, the teacher has to fight the parent. The child understands that they are in the minority. Because not every teacher is a racist. And real talk, as African Americans, we need to stop blaming the system when we are actually creating some of the image. We're helping to perpetuate. Listen, let's be real. Some of y'all scared of us. Shoot, I'm scared of us. Let's not be cute about it. So we got to care. So Save Our Sons is not about Republican or Democrat. It's not about, you know, school district versus the mayor. It's not about St. Paul versus Bethel. It's not about 100 black men versus the chapel. It's about hope finally figuring out that we don't sit at the same table. We all are going to starve. See, you know what happened to Save Our Sons? Over 20 organizations came to the table. No egos, no agendas. Everybody saying the same thing. That's why we got a thousand people here on a Saturday for Jacksonville, Florida. The nation is watching us. That's why the mayor is here and the superintendent is here. That's why our food coordinators are here. That's why our politicians are showing up. You know we don't show up if it ain't something going on. We change the culture. But parents, we got to take authority. So here's my challenge. I need parents to come together with me, form some organi an organization that will save our sons and daughters. And when we do this next year, we need to be at the prime hospital and the city to You know what I am? I ain't, a, I ain't a Democrat or a Republican. I'm an independent. You got to earn my vote. That's my one to the city. At the end of the day, we got to change the culture, so I'm going to conclude with this. Because I is a preacher. I ain't a very good one, but I is a preacher. There is a Bible verse tied to this shit. When Pharaoh got afraid of Israel, he put out a hit on the man. He said, I'm going to kill him before they get old enough to know who they are. But there was one mama that said, one time you ain't killing She took her baby Moses, put him in a basket, and covered him.
they're going to have to pay the pretty picture today. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to paint a picture of a city that at least on one day figured it out. I want to thank, and I need to do this, Mr. Farrell, who, um, and I'm doing this not because he required it, but I think this is important to understand this is much bigger than just us. Us, it's about us. He has, his, his firm um, um, has paid for all of the food today.